technology. Anyone go ahead and want to want to start? Uh, the use of technology and uh, open uh, source philosophy to manage the information overload and to prevent it from becoming an overload. Yeah, um, I really view it as the creation of platforms to um, allow for citizens to engage in public life and the future of public life in their city, region, or country. My personal take is that is is technologies that are created based on the new developments that the internet is providing and that are, that are created with a very positive impact in mind that are created as I mentioned in the presentation in a way that the quality of the of the product of that of that technology is directly tied to the quality of the input and and a technology that is by design intended to be adopted by as many people as possible no, there's there's a, there's a, a contradiction between the last two points. Being a, 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 the greater the amount of people that participate into a technology, the lower the average quality of input is going to be. And the magic of civic technologies going forward will be being able to manage that tension between those two points. In my opinion, the civic technology is basically the technology is accessible to the people who are technologists. But it has to come down to a platform where it can be used by anyone. So the data that TTC is publishing is only uh, makes sense to people who know technology. But only the rocket man that is usable by everyone. So the uh, in between what is the government is giving as open data, you need to have people who can translate it and then make it available to the masses. That's basically the data as the civic technology is uh, becoming useful. I would very much I share that thought. It's, it's a technology result of having uh, the urban life in the city and what goes into sometimes in every, every day's life. Uh, and that, that data, having it available in a transparent way, and for everyone, it's the key to have the civil technology. Okay, so speaking of attention that you spoke of just now, um, what do you think, what areas of civic tech do you think are in need of attention? Like, are there anything that you can see that eventually are going to be a problem? Do you see something like issues with data or any sort of thing you have to contend with in the future that might be an obstacle? So one thing that I see is that there are a lot of people who are opening data, but they are not consumable by the same technology or tools that are being built. So one of them that I see is that the Open North initiative of bringing, a, bringing and building a, a common API, which if the government were to use a similar format, if 10 government use similar technology or similar way of uh, exporting the data, then uh, there are tools that are being written, one tool can be used uh, to see so many different things. I see places where you have an Excel sheet that each one has its own format. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is writing a tool to uh, analyze what is actually being there, there is no way you have to write every single one over and over again for every single sheet that you find. So like a common... Common standards. Uh, common common standards standard is very, very important. Yeah, I think Yuri's... Um, yeah. trajectory at the end um, about like creating yeah. the standards and then getting to like this this the place where you can have like a app gallery I'm just thinking of Ottawa is launching their um, app gallery of all the apps that are made with the city of Ottawa um, data and that's something that I think like we need to encourage cities to get towards but I think the big issue really is still like we can't get ahead of ourselves the issue is still Government's releasing information that matters, not the information that's easy to release. Like, it's easy to release the ward boundaries of, like, where the districts are in, well, easy, of where, I shouldn't speak too quickly about my frustrating past month in Hamilton. Anyway, but, um... Uh, but, but, I, have, I have drawn the maps myself, even though, as I said, you've got to file freedom of information requests yeah. to get the transparency committee to release its right. minutes. Right, so like so. we're still we're still in that stage in like getting the government of Canada to release stuff that's actually important, voting records, um, that type of information. And I think on the standards front, um, we as 
Canada, in my humble opinion, should look to what the UK um, released last week. I think on Friday they released their um, open standards principles, which allowed for um, it set for across the UK government the inter interoperability standards for the entire UK government, and it's that type of stuff which makes Microsoft have to pull up its socks and compete against us, compete against Pacific Tech to have stuff that everyone can use is really what we need to like hammer through. Yeah. So uh, having this data available uh, and now a lot of local government and municipalities um, contributing, it's very important to unify the way the data is being communicated and, and made available for everyone. Because uh, from a development point of view, you don't want to be spending time creating software that works with different uh, data feeds. What you want to focus on features. So Rocketman, for example, is compatible with Guelph. I can plug in the Guelph uh, transit uh, information and make it available for the Guelph residents. Uh, but it won't work for Calgary because Calgary uses different uh, uh, protocol. And that is the key, is having it unified, and, and, and it's a good thing that information is made public for other municipalities to join. And another thing is, I wanted to touch base, is releasing the data is not easy. Uh, putting the political uh, politics aside sometimes, it's the government is the biggest corporate in, in Canada. And when you have a big corporate things just don't move fast and that's why the reason we see sometimes <laughs> startups can be you know big elephants and and spin around them and uh, you see that every time so for them actually to accomplish this and have like what the TTC did uh, I really give them credit because it's just really not easy if you work for a bank you work for the government it just thinks it takes, takes forever three months you're still walking talking about the budget and who's going to be working on it. So uh, it takes some time, but it's it's very positive step. I also think public awareness of the importance of, of these kind of features is, is important. I'm sure everybody here is fully aware of open data, and, 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 and but I don't think that translates to a two kilometer radius. And maybe, I mean, in this world of technological wonders, it's, it's easy for us to not really think about what's behind the scenes of something as amazing as Rockman. And, Maybe it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be interesting if in this kind of apps and in this kind of applications, uh, there was an actual mention that this is thanks to the open data movement so that people actually, actually know. And also, in, in my opinion, I believe the, the elected officials, they need to know that certain things are helping them and certain things are not helping them. And uh, so TTC released it. Did any citizen actually went and thank them? That you know it is good that you you guys actually worked hard to release it. And then did anybody go to another municipality and say that look what Toronto has done? Can we do something similar to that? There is a need for it. If the elected officials can see that you know, but but by me doing this, if I will get another additional 200 votes or 500 votes. They are going to do Those it. Quality, yeah. you know, they're getting that return That's on right. investment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, which is very, very important. So, people have to start talking back to them. And if you just talk about certain comments that are like, I mean, I was reading Toronto Star. Some of the comments that are coming in Toronto Star, some are quality comments on the topic, but you see all of a sudden some comments that are completely irrelevant. Absolutely nothing. No, no good for any anyone. And also, they have no, none of their name. Unknown <laughs> person who is. So, if we can get the uh, citizens to engage with the elected officials, I think there's a lot to be achieved there. Joey, do you have anything to say on this? Um, in terms of, sorry, I actually go back because I was getting the board maps for Ali and I <laughs> lost track there. So, sorry. We actually had to buy them. We spent $84 because <laughs> environmental defense needed them. So. Oh. <laughs> non <-profits. laughs> Okay. So, so we're just talking about, you know, just um, what areas of civic tech do you think are in need of, you know? Okay, so, yeah. So uh, I would say standards, where we were talking about standards, 
Uh, I'm not as concerned about trying to find a common standard so much as I'm trying to find a common format in the sense that as long as the information is at its simplest level and structured in a logical way, um, I don't think that we're going to have too much time, trouble translating between different standards. If we get so caught up in trying to have a standard, the standard has to be so huge to deal with local ano anomalies. And we also discourage local innovation if people feel they have to square themselves into that peg. What we need to do is make sure that people know Excel format, evil. CSV, good. You know, bring it down to that simple level. Um, in terms of areas of engagement, I think the public's becoming aware of the open data movement, and I don't think that we need to so much concern ourselves with making people have open data on the tip of their tongues, but have people aware that there are these groups that are advocating for transparency so that politicians know that behind the scenes, if they fail to work with these groups, there will be consequences. Um, and then lastly, it would be, if I was going to focus on education, it would be making the back ends more accessible to people so that they understand what's happening behind, making sure that we have clear notations in our code so that people understand why our code is a certain way so that others can build upon the code so that we're not reinventing the wheel. A uh, perfect example being that um, I assume that it was not possible to find the ward maps I created and put out as open data for Hamilton easily. So I have to look at that because I spent, I don't even want to imagine how much time because Hamilton's ward maps run along creeks and run along the escarpment and run along rail lines. Um, so to create the ward map is literally going along creeks and tracing out a weaving creek that also juts off at a highway ramp exit. And sometimes it's the middle of the road, mm -hmm. sometimes it's the other side of the road. Um, I cover police, and sometimes you listen to the police on scanners argue about where a car is that is skidded <laughs> and what percentage of it is on which side of the road so that they determine who's investigating. This, so yeah, I mean, so that's part of it is better connection, but it would be the simplify it. Let's not try to do too much. I definitely see what you're saying because we even mentioned before about you know government being this big entity and almost corporation, and you by saying that by having a common standard, it might just bog things down even further. So it might be good to maybe keep it local and kind of provide, instead of doing across the board standards. But there are certain frameworks I'm sure that we can like all well, abide by. Well, if you're starting from scratch, yes. I mean, instead yeah. of spending time on research and innovating a standard mm -hmm. and trying it, you can take something that is already working. And if it works for the city of T Toronto or San Francisco, it's definitely large enough to fit smaller municipalities, right? And also, they have to see the value. See, um, if they see uh, they have their data, why should they format it in a format that is accessible to the other? So if they see the rocket man, yes. the next uh, city that is implementing their system for the transit, they can say that, you know what? If we built it in a comparable manner, we can start making use of this application. So the, if you look at the computer industry, it took a long time before the mouse, you can put the, uh, use the USB and uh, the color-coded keyboard and all of them. They were, I mean, in the early 90s, it was nightmare. If you bought a Dell, it wouldn't fit so with the others. what and you're whatnot. promoting is a kind of a, not a competitive environment, but something where we get to a point of collaboration. Mostly. That's right, yeah. Okay. And they have to see the end result so that they, they start producing the right stuff from the beginning. I've got a couple, couple of points that I think is important here because I've, I've participated, uh, as probably many of you have, in, in, in hackathons and we've seen a lot of these uh, apps contests that a variety of organizations hold. There's, there's a couple of things that are really, really key. Uh, number one is that Creating an app because you think it's cool is not necessarily the best thing to do. Yeah. There has to be a defined need. And obviously transit is probably one of the key ones. Uh, but in addition to that, one of the things that I'm very 